and welcome to the Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle in Stormwind, I go for a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. I grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy. This episode we will be going over the druids and the locks. What are they? What do they do? What do they bring to the game? What can they do in PvP scenarios, in raiding scenarios, their specialisations and everything in between? As always, we're going to be starting off with the weekly news. We have Strunran as your world boss that is in uh, Onaran Plains. Yes, that is correct. And we have the Zakali Elders located in the Zaralak Caverns. Warlords of Drain or Time Walking will be your bonus event for this week. Warsong Scramble is your brawl. This is uh, very simple. This is three flags in the flag room. You can just run them back and forth as quickly as you can to beat the opposition. You need 10 flags to win. Tyrannical Entangling and Bursting are our mythic affixes for this week. Tyrannical, the bosses and the mobs that they spawn have increased health and damage. Entangling, if you stand still, you're going to get rooted. It's not a good time. Keep moving. Bursting, when an enemy dies, essentially they burst, dealing damage and putting a nasty debuff on you. Kill everything very quickly and get this dispelled by a mass dispel or anything like that, or use defensives. Or kill them within regular intervals, so let uh, kill five mobs and then let bursting drop and then kill the next five, you know, that kind of deal. Atiash is going to be the um, weapon that we look at and uh, the law behind it, essentially. We're going to be looking at a very basic version of the law um, because it is a very unique item within World of Warcraft. So Atiash, great stuff of the Guardian is a powerful staff passed down through the line of the Guardians of Tirisfall, up to and including Medivh, the last Guardian that we had in Azeroth. It's currently used or wielded by Khadgar, who was Medivh's apprentice, former apprentice, and uh, it is born from the Seed of Hate, apparently, and grants its wielder power unending, according to lore. Uh, Atiash can be used to open portals to Karazhan and it's also known for attracting ravens towards the wielder. Atiash gives its wielder the ability to turn into a raven themselves. That is why in a lot of the cinematics with Khadgar you see him turn into said raven. So in World of Warcraft, the World of Warcraft history of Atiash, we won't be going into the very deep lore of it and stuff, but Atiash was uh, originally a legendary caster staff which could be assembled via a quest prior to uh, the release of Naxxramas in uh, Wrath of the Lich King. So the quest begins inside Naxxramas and it, inv- and it involves obtaining several parts of the staff. The staff can be a chain- obtained by mages, warlocks, priests and druids. The items w- or the stats on the staff were different depending on the uh, class that wielded it. The cloth portion of the staff varies on the colour because of the caster that is wielding it. So it was green for druids, red for mages, white for priests and blue for warlocks. The staff provides an ability to open the portal to Medivh's Tower of Karazhan. It wouldn't be really important in Classic, but in TBC this was obviously very important at the start as Karazhan was a raid um, at the start of TBC. Assembling the staff, so Kel'Thuzad, um and his bosses essentially dropped splinters of Ashtiesh. You needed 40 of these splinters, and then you could form the frame of Atiesh. You basically take this to Anachronos, who gives you a quest to obtain the base and the head of Atiesh, the base you get from Cthune, and the staff head from Kel'Thuzad, and the final step, you go into Stratholm to cleanse the stra- the staff. Um, this is a really uh, cool part to the boss or to the quest line because you can essentially disarm this demon and get a legendary sword for fifteen minutes, and it's a very cool fight in itself. So, essentially, the players could wield Atiash, but it was taken out of the game after the first two expansions and no longer obtainable. Although you still can obtain it if you still have the um, actual base or the frame of ATS, the quest to get the splinters, essentially, you can still get it. But 
you know, if you do not have that quest, like, to begin with, then it is unfortunately unobtainable for you um, at this current time in World of Warcraft. In any World of Warcraft, actually, the only one that you can get it in is World of Warcraft era. So, there is that. Uh, essentially, it's a really cool stuff, and it always has been very lore significant. You see very powerful mages wielding this. They They kind of... They probably toyed with the idea of putting Atiesh as the mage artifact weapon, but it makes sense that Khadgar would wield it, considering he was in the expansion, and seeing Khadgar wield Atiesh, the weapon that you would have had as well, you know, kind of doesn't make it um too, too artifact-y. I suppose you can say the same for, like, Ashbringer and stuff, because Ashbringer is very lore significant, but the Ashbringer we hadn't seen in-game for a very long time, since then, whereas the main sort of person leading you through the Legion expansion was the wielder of Atiesh. So before we get on to the actual episode itself, I'd like to say a massive thank you, as always, to everyone who tunes in every week to the tavern um, and, uh, you know, showing your support to the show. It is growing each and every week with new and older patrons coming to the tavern. I must ask for your support even more. This podcast is uh, not my full-time job, as you all know, and I put as much effort into it as I can without having any content hidden behind a paywall. With all of this said, down below there is a link to support the show um, from as little as $3 a month. Um, Times are very tough at the moment, and I do understand this, but the extra extra support that could be shown... Uh, would be a massive help to the show. These uh, people who do support the show can get a shout out or even become a part of the podcast and appear on a show at a later date. And uh, again, it's just a massive thank you for all of those that do support the show. And now let's get back to the episode. So Druids, we'll start with Druids as I'm most comfortable with the Druids. Kind of... We'll be going over what specs they are. This is going to be a lot more user-friendly, so those who are looking to get into World of Warcraft. And uh, we're also going to be having some, like, later on sort of high-end, um, what they're kind of used for in PvP, raiding, etc. The Druids have four specialisations. You have Guardian, Feral, Balance, and Restoration. Uh, all of them are a different... Um, they they bring something different to the table. So Feral brings a melee DPS. Uh, rest, Restoration brings a healer. Moonkin, oh my god, Balance, that's the one, brings a range DPS. And Guardian brings a tank specialization. Now, the Druid can obviously shapeshift into many different forms. You have a bear, cat form, a moonkin. You have a... You can still like turn into a tree end, so a tree but that's more of a cosmetic thing now. You obviously have cheetah forms, so travel forms that increase your speed. You have an aquatic form, and uh, I'm, I feel like there's one that I'm missing, but I don't think I am. No, I don't think I am. So you can shapeshift into many of these different forms, and they all have their own different um, utility and uh, uses. So obviously, if you are a feral druid, you'll be utilizing cat form mostly. If you're a balanced druid, you'll be using Moonkin form, Guardian druid, Bear form, and Restoration druid. You don't really use a form, sadly, but they are still very effective. Bear form for tanking damage, Cat form for being sneaky and stealthing, and uh, balance uh, Moonkin form to just do more damage with your spells. All of these have obviously their places, but in PvP, they are very much a utility uh, class at the moment you're seeing a lot of balanced druids in pvp this is because uh crowd control got nerfed quite heavily in the latest patch they brought a lot of crowd control kind of down to the same level so everything doesn't exceed six seconds uh, in terms of crowd control you can the only reason that you can exceed six seconds uh, is through the Evoker spell Oppressing Roar, which increases CC duration. But essentially, uh, they are a utility. They can provide damage, they can off-heal, they can uh, perform CC duties really well, they can peel for their other teammates really well. 
In raids, they can be utilised to buff the raid through certain things. So Mark of the Wild, obviously, is a just general buff. You can provide a lot of damage reduction. Well, no, not damage reduction. Yeah, damage reduction and a lot of AoE heals, a lot of healing over time as a restoration druid. For Guardian Druids, it's kind of sad at the moment, but you can still utilise how tanky you are just by yourself. But I, I don't really, I don't want to comment on the PvE side as much as I'm not as familiar. But it's more the utility that you bring to the raids rather than your flat out healing uh, in most situations. Role playing wise, you can obviously turn into a cat bear. You can do a lot of that. But uh, again, I'm not one for talking about RP. But I would say that you have many different options to role play as a animal. So a cat, a bear, a tree, if you really want. You can just be sat out a goldshire in, looking like a uh, stump. Essentially, if you if that's what you're really into, go for it. But yeah, it, it's you've got many different options. The kind of pros and cons of them, the pros are obviously you can be very flexible, you can be a tank, you can be a ranged DPS, a melee DPS healer, so you have every single sort of role filled within a group, but the cons very much are the, god I'm trying to think of the cons immediately, you're kind of locked to that, um, I want to say form, there's no fluidity, so if you're a guardian druid, you kind of have to be in bear form to do like what you want. Whereas you can't be like a guardian cat, which would be very cool, or a guardian moonkin. You can't be a feral moonkin. You can't be a feral uh, bear. Although these are really cool. Why don't they do this? They should. You should be allowed to pick a primary form. I, I think that would be amazing. Actually, thinking about this. Yeah, I think you should be able to pick a primary form along with your specialization. I think that would be amazing and something that should be looked at in the near future Blizzard because, you know, Druids need more customizations with their specializations. That rhymed and that was very unintentional. Um, Essentially, when you're like in PvP trying to do damage as a ranged DPS, as a boomkin, and you're forced into bear form, you're kind of useless. You're kind of like a tank bot. You're just sitting there getting hit by some warriors, and you're healing, but you're not doing any damage. You're not doing any counter pressure or anything like that. Whereas, like, in a raiding situation, maybe your cyclone isn't as useful, so you're obviously going to be a bit more less useful on the CC front, the crowd control front, because... Rogues can obviously kidney shot something and it can still take damage. Whereas Cyclone, they just don't take damage. They can't do anything. They can't heal. They can't move. They can't do absolutely anything. So there are pros and cons to Cyclone itself as well. But the pros are obviously you can be whatever form you want. You can... Oh, you can be a raven. That's it. Flight form. I was forgetting a form. Oh my god. Um, But yeah, sorry that just popped back into my mind. But essentially, you have a lot of different pros where it comes to like you, you're very fluid with what roles you can fill in a group. But at the same time, the cons are very much that you can't exit that role that you like take. Essentially, if you're a guardian druid, you're a bear. If you're a feral druid, you're a cat. Whereas you can't be, like I said before, a feral moonkin, etc. It's very much you're locked into that. And you're kind of useless in the other forms. Um, besides like maybe healing if you go into bear form for feral DPS or a balanced DPS. You're a bit tankier. You're healing yourself through frenzy regen. You know, maybe stuff like that. But, you know, you're not doing a lot of damage if you're a guardian druid and you want to go into cat form. Uh, if you take Wrath of Lich King, for example, if you take feral druids, they are both tanks and DPS. So you can hop into a cat form and actually do quite a fair amount of DPS. Um, it, it's not the same in retail where you're kind of stuck in your bear form doing most of your damage. Which, you know, it, it's understandable, but it's a little bit upsetting. Warlocks, on the other hand, have three specialisations, all of them being damage specialisations. You have Affliction, Demonology, and you have Destruction. So one of them sounds a lot more cooler than the other, which is destruction. But affliction is very much you're putting dots, damage over time effects, on a lot of people. 
and you're using these dots to just slowly rot away the enemy's health bar. So it's a lot of numbers, very small numbers, and they're doing damage very frequently. Demonology, you're using your pets as your damage, so you don't personally have a damage source, apart from Hand of Gul'dan, which does like no damage at all. Your pets are doing all of the work. And you have Destruction. Big Chaos Bolts do a lot of damage. That's it. That's the spec. Big damage. Slower intervals. That so you have kind of a small or a quick, medium, and a slow damage source. Destruction being the slow, Demonology being the medium, and the Affliction, walk being, affliction Lock being the quick. In terms of like how quickly the numbers are showing up on your screen. If you want some dopamine, definitely go with Affliction Warlock because you're do you're seeing so many numbers so quickly you think that you're just doing a lot. Which you are, in fairness, you are doing a lot of damage. Destruction, if you like seeing big numbers, so really chunky numbers, and you see someone's health bar just chunk like half of their health, Destruction's the one for you. And if you're kind of in between, you go Demonology and you like your pets, you know, that kind of thing. Um, for PvP, again, it's kind of a utility-based um, class with spammable CC. You have a lot of gateways, some mobility. You have your teleports. You have your health stones and stuff like that. But you're you're more of a just you're one of the kind of pure DPS classes. You can just pump damage and not care about anything in the world. Uh, sometimes. In raids, uh, I would imagine this is a very fun. In PvP, you might be the target, you might not, depending on what you're playing with. But essentially, you are utility as well as the damage, and you've got to get a right balance from game to game. That's where one of the cons is. Um, if you are being targeted as a Destro Warlock, uh, Destruction Warlock, it's going to be a bit tougher to get your damage out because you're having to cast. Whereas if you're an Affliction Warlock, you're a bit more fluent or fluid fluent yeah fluent with your damage because you're instant casting quite a lot of things but your main damage source your unstable affliction isn't a instant cast so you do have to cast to get that damage source out as well um obviously the pros are you can just obliterate someone from an arena um very quickly and very effectively and uh, not many classes can do that um, outside of their cooldowns, essentially. Whereas your cooldowns, you you definitely can still just chunk people's health down, which is really cool, in my opinion. Roleplay wise, you are just darkness. Um, is the best way I can describe it. You are so kind of emo. Um, in your appearance, you're obviously going to go for these cool dark wings on the back of your warlock because you've got demons next to you and you're going to go for this dark like dress or this massive dark headpiece or something and you're just going to look so badass it's unreal you know you can do many different things with the warlock in terms of rp um but yeah that they just look very cool and you obviously have a pet as a warlock but you can choose not to you can choose to sacrifice this if this is sort of your class fantasy as well, to sacrifice a pet to empower yourself, uh, you certainly can do this. The pros are, like I've said before, you can do a lot of damage and you have a lot of utility with your CC, fears and stuff. The cons are very much, if you get tunnelled, you're not going to have as much of a fun time, in my opinion. That's from my personal experience. You, you can have fun while kiting, but sometimes... If I'm ever left alone, I just miss doing so much damage. I just I just do so much damage if I'm left alone. And getting like trained by a couple of melee makes me think, oh god, I wish I was just left alone to like pump damage essentially. Um so that's kind of the annoying thing that you do so much damage, but you don't necessarily get to always output that much damage if you're in a PvP scenario. In raids, obviously, there's stuff where, like, mechanics you have to move from, but at the same time, you can just pump that damage. So it's very much dependent on the sort of... What is it? Scenario? No, not scenario. The content that you do. That's the best way to phrase it. 
but they they are very fun locks they are very fun they are probably one of the most difficult to get into difficult to get into but at the same time difficult to master again this is the same with all classes they all have their niches but warlocks especially if you're going to pvp are a lot tougher i think to fully master than a couple of other specs maybe like fury warrior or something you know um druids i would definitely say are somewhat easy to get into but again very tough to master feral especially in my opinion I uh, I would give these as like more of the medium kind of classes to figure out. Druid, I definitely would. If you're st- looking to start World of Warcraft, Druid would be one of the more medium classes that you might look towards when you've played the game for a little bit and are looking to go like get an alt or something, an alt character. Warlocks, I would probably look at one of the later classes that you make unless you are very much into that whole summoning demons and you know using sort of dark chaotic magic type of thing um but you don't want to be like a mage or something so you want to be a spellcaster but kind of on the dark side of a spellcaster that kind of deal um but yeah i I would definitely say these are tougher than hunters to pick up initially but still a very high skill ceiling for all classes um and the potential is there for both of them but that is it for this episode thank you all very much for listening as always do check out the patreon as well as everything down below all of the links are down there thank you all very much for supporting the show as always and go with valor friend goodbye all